After the Paleocene came the Eocene. This occurred 55 million years ago and lasted for 23 million years. This period brought higher temperatures to the Earth. The climate on Earth became milder and warmer. Warmer than in the Mesozoic. By then, our planet had finally recovered from the last mass extinction. That had wiped out all the dinosaurs. The diversity of life forms had reached Mesozoic levels. This is plankton. A buoyant mass made up of large quantities of small algae and small animals. Plankton are an integral part of the world's oceans. These algae lived even in the most secluded corners of the Eocene seas. In the ocean depths, new species of mollusks appeared. Crustaceans like crabs and hermit crabs also appeared. Snails represented the majority of mollusks in this era. In the Eocene, the extremely poisonous sea snail, the cone snail, appeared. Of the cephalopod mollusks, only the nautilus, which still lives in our seas today. In our seas to this day. Nothing significant happened in the echinoderm world. The flat sea urchin appeared. Sometimes this creature is called the sand dollar. Also in the Eocene, the sea lily pentacrinites became extinct. Many bony fish of all shapes and sizes appeared in the Eocene seas. Lakes and rivers all over the planet were astonished by the great diversity of freshwater fishes. The diversity of ray-finned fishes also increased dramatically. Fish actively filled available ecological niches. Perch. This is the largest order of Eocene fishes. This order includes high-bodied tropical acantheroids up to 70 centimeters long. The most famous modern representative of the acantheroidae is the surgeonfish. Mackerel fish have also appeared, including the modern genus Tuna. The barracuda, the angelfish and the parrotfish. The most popular fish species called herring or herring also appeared in the Eocene. It was also during this period that nature gave birth to creatures such as hedgehog fish, eels, codfish, oyster catchers, as well as carp, catfish, flounder, salmon, scorpionfish and many others. The famous tiger shark was in the dominant marine life of the time. The deep sea goblin shark appeared, surviving to this day without noticeable changes. Also from modern genera came the popular sawfish. Stingrays were not exactly widespread in the Eocene, but they were no longer a semi-extinct, but ceased to be a semi-extinct curiosity. In the insect world, ants became widespread. The largest ants in the history of the Earth lived in the Eocene. The size of working individuals, which reached a length of 3 centimeters. The wingspan of males reached 15 centimeters. It was also at this time that modern bees appeared. In the Eocene, many new groups of mammals evolved from the plant-eating mammals of the Paleocene. At the very beginning of the Eocene lived the small five-toed ungulate condylarthros. These fast-legged animals were the common ancestors of modern horses, cows, pigs, tapirs, rhinos and deer. Corypidon and Uintotherium. Corypidon belonged to the suborder Pantodons. It was one of the largest mammals that fed on leaves and fruits. Corypidon led a semi-aquatic life. This animal lived in swamps, like the modern hippopotamus. But it wasn't related to the hippopotamus or any other modern mammal. Uintotherium was a member of a dinocerate that lived in the Eocene period. It had three pairs of horn-like growths on its head. The growths were covered with skin, like giraffe horns. Uintotherium had powerful upper fangs for extracting earth roots that were deeply embedded in the ground. The animal's legs were as wide as an elephant's. 
Rodents predominated among small mammals. The ancestors of today's lemurs, tarsiers and golagos half-monkeys lived in trees. At the end of the Cretaceous, carnivorous sharks and some species of predatory bony fish took the place of huge marine reptiles. And some species of predatory bony fish. But some terrestrial mammals also returned to the sea to participate in the, the former domains of ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs. Among these animals were the mammals from which whales later evolved. The first fossilized whales are known from the Eocene. These aquatic mammals evolved from a group of predatory hoofed mammals that who reverted back to an aquatic lifestyle. At the same time, the first ancestors of animals familiar to everyone appeared on land. Moles, camels, rabbits and voles. And towards the end of the Eocene, the first cats, dogs and bears appeared. The Eocene was a time when many new families of animals flourished. The family Anthracotherium. This family included animals that looked like small hippopotamuses. As a result of evolution, the first pig-like animals appeared at this time. In the ancient forests of our planet, the deer-like Leptomerixes. And the semi-aquatic raccoon-like Indochius. Eocene Mesonychians adapted to eating fish rather than vegetation. For example, Pachycetidae lived mainly on land, and fed both on land and in water. The Ambulocetidae fed almost exclusively in water. They were peculiar mammalian crocodiles, up to 3 meters long and weighing up to 300 kilograms. Basilosaurids have gone the furthest in their adaptation to aquatic environments. Basilosaurs are considered the first whales. Unlike modern whales, these animals had a second, rear pair of fins. And many species had fingers sticking out of their fins. In fact, they were not whales, but mammalian analogues of the Mesozoic Mosasaurs. Basilosaurids were originally thought to be marine lizards. This was reflected in the animal's name. Basilosaurus reached 21 meters in length and was the largest animal of the Eocene. Other basilosaurids did not exceed 5 to 6 meters in length. Whale ancestors had not yet mastered echolocation. One of the largest land predators of the Eocene is Andrusarchus. 5 meters long and weighed about 1 ton. The animal had a skull nearly a meter long and could eat even the largest of herbivores. And could feed on even the largest of herbivores. Andrew's arcs were sedentary and omnivorous, like modern bears. Brontotherians. They were stocky and thick-skinned, nose-like creatures, weighing from 2 kilos to 1 ton. The smaller brontotherians looked more like boars than rhinos. Eohippus, the ancestors of modern horses, were small animals. Forest thickets that turned into swamps. These were the habitats of the Eohippus. The small animals had five toes on their front feet and three hoof toes on their hind feet. Eohippus had a small head on a short neck and had 44 teeth. Eocene horses weighed between 20 and 55 pounds and ran slowly. In the Eocene, the ancestors of rhinoceroses appear. The hornless animals were small, only up to two and a half meters long. At the end of the Eocene, the Uintotherians evolved from them. Uintotherians had three pairs of horns each, dagger-shaped long fangs, and a very small brain. Titanotherium. Living in grasslands near numerous rivers and lakes, Titanotherium were the size of, of modern elephants. The giants had large, branched horns. The Titanotherian's teeth were small. This suggests that the animals fed on soft vegetation. Tapirs also appeared in the Eocene. 
The largest Eocene tapirs, weighing up to 300 kilograms, are from the modern genus. Tapirs, which evolved in the Eocene and have remained virtually unchanged since then. Smaller Eocene tapirs quickly became extinct. Mammalian predators. The largest family of Eocene predators is the Myacidae. These were coon-like animals weighing about 2 kilograms. The first pseudospecies appeared. This species split into the dog and bear families. But then the future bears and dogs were similar to wyverns and raccoons. The first cat-like creatures were not of the feline family. These creatures looked like lynxes and panthers, but the animals had a gait like bears. Also in the Eocene, the first hyenas appeared. Corypidon and Hypercorypidon occupied the ecological niche of the modern dwarf Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, Stilinodon, weighing 80 kilograms, used its fearsome teeth to dig root vegetables out of the ground. Copidodon saber-toothed squirrels lived in the trees. These small animals had disproportionately large fangs, which they used either for self-defense or to fight between males. The small, wolf-like predatory creodonts did not yet have true predatory teeth. In the Eocene, true predators with real dangerous teeth evolved from them. In the course of evolution, all members of the canine and feline species evolved from these predators. They were the beta version of mammalian predators. These animals had an unfortunate lower jaw design that made it impossible for them to nibble on bones and eat medicinal herbs. In addition, the brains of these creatures were less developed than those of true predators. Here are examples of beta versions of the following predators. The 60-kilogram hyenodon was the creodont analog of the modern hyena. Patriophilus. This is the creodontian analog of the leopard. Macaroids is a saber-toothed cat the size of a palace cat. Sarcastodon is the largest of the Eocene creodonts. This animal reached 700 kilograms like a modern big bear. Only Megastotherium was larger than Sarcastodon. Megastotherium is the largest predatory land mammal of all time. A huge creodont weighing almost 1,000 kilograms. The head of the Eocene predator was twice the size of the head of the modern grizzly bear. The first bats appeared in the Eocene. Icaronicterus was the first bat, very similar to modern bats with wings made of patches of skin stretched tightly over long, thin fingers. This insect-eating animal hunted at night, when other aerial predators would not fly because of the darkness. Rhinoceros-like dinocerates with boar-like fangs and strange horny protrusions tried to flourish in the Eocene, but failed. By the end of the Eocene period, these animals were extinct. In the Eocene, the first hedgehogs appeared. They were very peculiar animals. For example, Pholodocircus, in addition to needles, had scales on its head in the form of a bone helmet, and the tail was long and scaly, like a lizard. Some Eocene hedgehogs fed not on insects but on fish. And one species of hedgehog ate only ants. Some ancestors of monkeys and lemurs lived in trees. These animals ate fruit and insects. Ancient monkeys and lemurs had long tails and limbs with well-developed fingers. With well-developed toes to help them climb trees. Within the largest superorder of primates was the largest suborder of wet-nosed monkeys. They were small arboreal animals up to six pounds in weight and all looked alike. Our distant ancestors the dry-nosed monkeys lost their developed sense of smell and began to rely mainly on sight. In the Eocene, dry-nosed apes differed little from their wet-nosed relatives. Rodents, too, 
sought to occupy as many ecological niches as possible and became more diverse. Rats, squirrels, beavers, and many others. In the Eocene period, the ancestors of modern trunks appeared. These were animals the size of a modern taper. The tusks of these creatures were small, and the trunk was an elongated upper lip. From them came the Dinotherians, whose lower jaw sloped downward at right angles. At the end of the jaws were tusks. Dinotherians had real trunks. The animals lived in humid forests with lush vegetation. At the end of the Eocene, the first representatives of elephants called Paleomastodonts appear. The first representatives of toothed and toothless whales also appear. Paleomastodonts already had two pairs of tusks on the lower and upper jaws. But these animals did not yet have a proboscis. Paleomastodon was the largest of the Eocene proboscideans. The animal weighed up to two tons. Other species were smaller. The smallest Eocene proboscideans did not exceed 15 kilograms. Eocene Afrotherium sirens. The largest of the Eocene sirenians was the dugong, reaching lengths of up to 5 meters and weighing up to 600 kilograms. These animals have survived to the present day, virtually unchanged. Arsenotherium. This is the African analog of the rhinoceros. Arsenotherium had a pair of large and small horns each. The body length reached 3.5 meters. The distant descendants of these animals are called domans. These are small ungulates living today. South American ungulates in the Eocene evolved sluggishly and produced nothing interesting. They were mostly omnivorous creatures like pigs and about the same size. In the Eocene, a strange animal appeared called Leptictidium. It was an animal like a kangaroo with the nose of a puffin. The predator reached 90 centimeters in length with its tail. In the Eocene, there was also a mysterious anteater called Eurotamandua, up to 90 centimeters long. It is not at all clear what order this animal belongs to. The Eocene mammals also include opossums and platypuses, familiar to us from the Paleocene. Penguins have become very widespread. The largest of these birds reached a height of almost 2 meters and a weight of 100 kilograms. They were the largest penguins that ever lived on Earth. Interestingly, all Eocene penguins had long and sharp beaks, like those of herons. In the superorder Galonsuri, which includes chickens, ducks, and geese, the Gusagerival presbyonis and Diatromagasterni continued to live, but before the end of the Eocene, both birds became extinct. The Diatroma, a fast-footed, terrible crane, nearly two meters tall, lived in North America. It had an enormous beak, similar to a parrot's beak, and monstrous claws, which Diatroma used to finish off and tear apart its prey. Apparently, Diatroma was a fearsome enemy of the early ancestors of horses, and it is likely that this bird could easily have eaten a horse. On the sea coasts in the Eocene lived quite modern cormorants and loons. Also found in the Eocene were huge toothed Pelagornithidae with wingspans up to 6 meters. These birds with huge wings occupied the ecological niche of the giant pterodactyls of the Cretaceous. The first swifts, falcons, parrots, herons, flamingos, and woodpeckers appeared. Owls were widespread. Crocodilomorphs greatly reduced in numbers in the Eocene. Alligators were widespread first, gavials second, and crocodilians third. The size of Eocene crocodilomorphs reached up to 6 meters. The bipedal crocodile Pristichampsis became extinct in the Eocene. Among the scaly reptiles, the first venomous snakes and the first land tortoises appear in the Eocene. Crocodile like Choristodera also continue to exist. The amphibious frogs, newts, and salamanders continued unchanged. 
At the end of the Eocene, the vast ocean of Tethys began to change into the shallow Mediterranean Sea. And lithospheric plates in India began to push up the Tibetan Himalayan mountain system. The Earth became noticeably colder. A glacier began to form in Antarctica. All this led to the moderately large extinction event that marks the end of the Eocene. However, this extinction can only be called moderately large by Cenozoic standards. Compared to the extinction of the dinosaurs, it was nothing. And by Cambrian standards, it wasn't an extinction at all, it was normal everyday life. Thank you for watching this episode to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And also press the bell to not miss new and interesting releases from the channel Real Unreal.